Hey guys, welcome to another video here on Cloudwood's YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about my data storage and backup strategy for 2017. So stay tuned. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how exactly I, st I store my data on my various devices and how I back them up because if you've been following uh, Cloudwoods lately, you know that backup is very important to me. So I'm gonna cover this um, in this video. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about the three devices or the three hardware uh, stuff that, that I have here. Um, I'm not gonna go really into depth about each individual device. I'm gonna create individual videos for that. So uh, make sure you subscribe to see all the individual reviews of the hard drives of the network attached storage and the direct attached storage. So um, what's critical about uh, this strategy is that I, or what I figured uh, that I needed for 2017 is that I needed more storage. I'm doing a lot with video, I'm shooting a lot of photos, we're creating a lot of visual content, so to speak, and I noticed that <laughs> it's really uh, taking a toll on my hard drives. I was working with a four terabyte uh, hard, or with two four terabyte hard drives for the last couple of months, essentially, and storage is really becoming low. So I decided to upgrade my storage capacity. So I purchased a uh, seven, eight terabyte Seagate hard drives. And you're gonna find the exact hard drives that I purchased in the description box. So make sure you click on that and check the price. But the Seagate hard drives are currently the most affordable eight terabyte hard drives that you can buy. I think I bought them for around $300 but um, do make sure to check out the price for these, um, for these hard drives because they, they vary quite a lot. I'm gonna use these hard drives for these two devices here. Um, as I said in the introduction, this one is a Synology NAS. Um, I think it's the Disk Station 212 Plus. It is a older model. I think it's from 2012, but it works very, very well. Um, I can use it for, for a lot of things. And as I said, this is a network attached storage device. So this is connected to your network. And in theory, you can also access it from, uh, from wherever you are. So if you don't wanna have a cloud storage service from a, from a third party vendor, this device is what you need in order to access your files remotely. Then I have the uh, direct attached storage. And uh, as I'm doing a lot of video editing uh, because of my, my YouTube channels and, and for the work that I do for clients, um, I wanted to have something that is directly attached to my computer. So I purchased the Terramaster. I forgot the serial number, but again, I'm gonna put that in the description uh, um, box below. Uh, and this device uh, is essentially just a hard drive rack where you can put in these uh, Seagate hard drives and those, and then you connect this device via USB-C to your laptop, to your working computer, to, to whatever device uh, that you need uh, the storage. And I use this device because direct attached storage still gives me better performance when uh, it comes to video editing. Now, as you can see, the Terramaster has five bays and the disk station has two bays. So my plan is actually, I still have to test this out, but this is like in theory the, the, the plan that I made for myself. I want to plug in five hard drives into the uh, Terramaster and the Terramaster um, supports two different RAID modes. So um, a RAID mode is essentially when, uh, when the device internally mirrors the data um, on the hard drives that you put into the device. So it has RAID 0 and it supports RAID 5. Now RAID 0 is a little dangerous <laughs> because um, RAID 0 doesn't uh, give you a fallback, meaning if one hard drive fails, you're gonna lose the data. So you really have to think hard about whether or not you really wanna use uh, RAID, RAID, RAID 0 for, um, for this. Um, I think I'm gonna use RAID 5. The problem with RAID 5 is you have a fault tolerance of one disk, um, so that's good. Um, but the problem is uh, the performance goes down. And I still have to test it, how it works with video editing, uh, in uh, particular with this device, if the speed is still, uh, is still all right. 
Now, I think the bottleneck is going to be my machine that I'm currently working on, so I need to really update uh, the machine uh, still, but um, I, will, I will certainly uh, test this out. Now, the Synology, as you can see, they support a uh, few more RAID, and they have a proprietary uh, RAID mode as well. Um, it's called Synology uh, RAID something, or Special RAID, or they have, a mar <laughs> they have a nice marketing term for that. And I generally use that because it allows one disk to, to fail as well. And I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna put two eight terabyte hard drives into the Synology, and I'm gonna connect this to my router here in the house because uh, that allows me to do my backups from, uh, from my devices, from my main workstation, from my laptop, onto the Synology disk station, and I can do this wirelessly, and that is pretty good. I cannot do this uh, with the um, TerraMaster. So, um, these are seven hard drives, so in, in total, this is quite a lot of storage, almost 50 terabyte of storage, and this should allow me um, to have quite some, some videos, and quite some video archives on it. Um, the second thing is, obviously, uh, that I talk a lot about in this channel is cloud backup. And cloud backup is important because it gives you another security layer on top of your files. Meaning, you not only have the RAID backup, <laughs> so to speak, in this machine, but as I say a lot, RAID is not backup. Um, you have the RAID in here, but also, as this is a direct attached storage device, you can use most of the cloud backup services that you find on cloudwoods.net, and I'm gonna leave the comparison chart right here so you, that you can check uh, which service is the best for you. Most of those services allow you to back up direct attached storage devices. Unfortunately, the majority of services do not allow backing up of network attached storage devices. So, um, I will use uh, one of my, my backup services that, that I recommend, which is, uh, for example, Backblaze that offers unlimited cloud storage. Um, I can back up this entire thingy here, um, and even if I fill it up with 40 terabytes, as Backblaze offers unlimited cloud storage, I can back up the full 40 terabytes because, as I, as I said before, it is a direct storage system. So I have another layer of security in the cloud with these files. Um, I really hope that the performance is going to work out in a RAID 5 mode, otherwise I still have to figure out whether I'm going to risk it to use the RAID 0, uh, where I do not have a full to tolerance for the disks. However, which calms me a little bit if I were to choose the RAID 0, is that these disks have only a, um, a faulty rate of 1.5%, uh, and you can check the hard drive reliability stats that Backblaze releases um, on an annual basis or quarterly basis, I'm not quite sure, but they release, they test a lot of those hard drives, and they have very, very good, even the 8 terabyte models, they have very good reliability, and um, that's why um, you may want to think about if it's worth the risk of uh, using it in a RAID 0. So this is actually gonna be my, my work setup. I'm gonna do my backups on the Synology. I'm gonna use the um, TerraMaster, where I have five of the eight terabyte hard drives in it for daily storage, for whatever storage uh, I need um, uh, here. And then there is another section that I wanted to talk about, and this is file synchronization and sharing, because um, either you have your, you, you use uh, the storage for uh, personal needs or you have some business clients, most likely you will need to share files that you store on either of those devices or you only store it on your computer, that doesn't matter. But my services that I use or frequently recommend are sync.com, which is, uh, in my opinion, a better version of Dropbox because they are based in Canada and they offer uh, zero knowledge privacy, meaning they encrypt files before they're uploaded to the cloud. And then I use another service that is called pCloud, and pCloud um, has, in my opinion, a better mobile app than sync.com, and it allows me to access files more easily on, um, on my device. And the good thing about those two services is that um, I can essentially free up hard drive space um, if, I, if I need to. So I can just move the files in the cloud and I don't need a local physical copy of those files 
on my machines or on my devices, and I can still uh, share them with my clients. So um, this is my data backup and storage strategy for 2017. Mostly this will work for my video and photo files that get really huge, but obviously you can use this strategy for virtually any number of files or any type of documents that you store. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your comments in the comments section below. And don't worry if uh, this was all a little fast, I will leave all the, um, the product links and the service links in the description box. And also you can find detailed reviews of those services there as well. I'm really hoping to see you in my next video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up.